Hey everybody, welcome to the Real United States. And today I wanted to share with you something that we found that I just thought was really fascinating. And what you see behind me is a sassafras tree. Now most of you should be familiar with the sassafras. It was used for many, many, many years as a foodstuff and numerous other purposes, but we'll get to that in a minute. This you can identify quite easily as a sassafras because of the lobed leaves. It has a lot of uh, double lobed leaves and then either a right hand or left hand single lobed leaf. And lastly but not leastly, it has non lobed smaller leaves. So this is a pretty easy to identify as a sassafras tree. It is the, there are three extant species of the sassafras. Uh, the one here in the eastern United States is the saf, um, sassafras albidum. Uh, there are, like I say, there's only three extant species and one extinct species. So they're a member of the laurel family, uh, Lauraceae. Lauraceae, yep. And uh, which has like 2,800 different species of, spread over about 45 genera. But a very, very significant plant in the history of the United States, believe it or not. In fact, it was such a important commercial product in the founding of the colonies here that its uh, importation was included in the Charter of the Colony of Virginia in 1610. Now, unfortunately, because of the way a lot of the materials that are used are harvested, namely the bark, um, early on, as much as a ton of this would be harvested and then shipped overseas in about 1610. But by 1626, I think it was, uh, they were having trouble finding 30 pounds of it to ship because it kills the plant when you harvest the bark, obviously. But virtually every part of this is used. The leaves, the stems, the bark, the wood, the roots. Um, now, for those of you that are familiar with it in culinary use, uh, kind, of, kind of an interesting thing. Uh, the oil, saffron, is extracted with a steam distillation process and it's used as a, uh, an essential oil and it's also used in food, foods, or at least it was. Okay, Sassafras tea was the big one. But in uh, 1960, the FDA, the Fed, uh, Food and Drug Administration, uh, banned the commercial production of foodstuffs with saffron uh, because it is uh, hepatotoxic, meaning it's bad for your liver, and because it is weakly carcinogenic, at least according to the studies that would have been done in the late 1950s. So you're going to get, a, I know I even on this video I'm going to get some pushback that the amount of saffron you would have to consume in order to for it to give you cancer is, well, an astronomical amount. Um, we read one comment that was like you'd have to drink 24 gallons of it a day for an extended period. At any rate, it is technically weakly carcinogenic. Now, for those of you who haven't experienced sassafras tea but would like to, um, you can still buy a sassafras tea mix. It's a liquid. Uh, here I'll put it on screen. It's Pappy's Sassafras. And the reason this is commercially available is because it is without any saffron. So while saffron is still available, it is also highly regulated because, uh, uh, amongst other reasons, it is a precursor in the manufacture of certain illicit drugs like MDA and MDMA, uh, respectively. Molly and Sally, for those of you who know the street names, or the MDMA, which is also called ecstasy. However, obviously an elaborate process to convert the distill the saffron and convert that to an illicit drug, but it is, because of this, a regulated, regulated essential oil. Now sassafras tea was also banned in the United States in 1977. 
but that was actually repealed in 1994 with the passage of the Dietary Supplement Health and Education Act. So you can now buy, possess, I guess sell, sassafras tea. I don't know all the particulars and the subtleties, though, involved in the saffron content. Now, sassafras was widely prized by the Native Americans for medicinal uses. It was used uh, on wounds. They would take the leaves and they would rub them directly into the wound. It was also used to treat urinary tract infections and acne, and it was also used to treat things like fever, any where the body temperature was high. So it was a very important part of the native culture, and when Americans, or Europeans, came to America and became Americans, um, this knowledge was passed on to them, and that's why it became so highly prized and was eventually exported back to Europe. Because this is an indigenous species to the eastern United States. There's another species that's indigenous to the western United States. This is the one that's largely used for the culinary purposes that you're probably familiar with. There's also an Asian species, and there's a one of them also is grown in South America, in Brazil. But I don't know which of those three. The Native Americans also used the wood especially small twigs, as fire starters because of the natural oil occurring in it made it very easy to get it started. So it was used as a fire starter. Now the uh, settlers to the United States from Europe and the Europeans found a great deal of value in the wood also because it's very, very resistant to rot. Um, so it was often used for anything that would be in contact with the soil. It was used in shipbuilding. Uh, it was also made into furniture. That was and is still practiced. Um, it also was used for a number of other things, uh, ox yoke, you know, the yokes that uh, farmers would use when they had oxen pulling wagons and other implements, those were sometimes made out of sassafras. Um, nowadays, of course, most sassafras is ornamental, so that a lot of the trees aren't very big. Finding large enough pieces for timber, if you will, a little harder to come by. I did see a picture recently on the internet that I thought was pretty interesting. It was a, a guitar, a, an acoustical guitar, made out of this very nice dark orange sassafras wood. And so it was really quite beautiful pattern too. It's got a lot of deep oranges and some black lines running through it, so very nice. Now despite all of the hubbub, turmoil, whatever, relating to the carcinogenic characteristics of saffron, don't think that saffron only comes from sassafras, so like it's no big deal. Saffron is found in many other foodstuffs that we use very commonly, including cinnamon, nutmeg, anise, black pepper, rosemary, dill, and others. I'll list those here on the screen someplace to show you the list that I found doing the research for this. So these all contain saffron. Now, I don't know that the concentrations in, sa in sassafras are necessarily you know, way higher, but at any rate, yes, at some point you've consumed something with saffron in it because it's a very common aromatic thing, chemical, found in spices. So just keep that in mind. It's maybe not the big deal before you start jumping for the keyboard to comment about how terrible it is that I'm talking about this carcinogenic plant as a foodstuff, eh, you know, give me a break. It's, we, we, we eat a lot of things that have saffron in it. So, anyway, easily identifiable. It's a beautiful big tree. They make nice ornamentals. I don't know personally exactly how you go about using fresh um, sassafras for making tea or any other sort of aromatic foodstuff or even for medicinal purposes. So I, I really can't advise anybody on that. I'm sure that information is all out there on the internet, but it's uh, pretty easy to identify. It's gonna have the three different leaves types. Two are loved, one isn't. And it's just, I really like sassafras tea as well as Bev, she also likes it a lot. So that's why this was something that we knew about and just when I saw it, it was like, hey, that's something we could share with everybody because this is you know, I say an indigenous American plant, 
that was exported to the rest of the world, to Europe. So I thought that that was kind of interesting. I hope you do too. If you've got questions or comments, please leave in the comments section below. We love hearing from everybody. I try to get back to everybody I can. If nothing else, just stop in and say hi. I always love hearing from all of you. Hey, if you're new here, pick subscribe. Come along for the adventure because we got lots more to show you. And as always, well, thank you for watching.